When it comes to America's interstate highway system, you'll find two types of highways. You have your mainline routes that are two or one digit. These are the routes that typically cover long distances and travel between various states and cities. These are the primary or parent routes. Then you have your three digit interstates that add a digit between one and nine to the primary interstate highway number that they spawn from. These are known as auxiliary routes or the child route. These highways usually spur off of the parent route towards the city or destination, and in this case, they will start with an odd number. Other times, they will form a loop or beltway that connects back to the parent route in two places. These types of auxiliary routes usually begin with an even number. But if you're like me and are sometimes curious about the oddities and discrepancies in the typical standards of the interstate highway system, then you've noticed that in some places, you may find auxiliary routes that do not connect to the parent route at all. They might be nearby or in the same city as the parent, but they never actually meet one another for various reasons. These are what I call orphan interstates. And on this video, we'll be looking at some of these orphan interstates around the US and explore why they never made the connection to the parent route. Go ahead and like the video, subscribe if you love it, and let's talk about some interstate highways. So in this video, we're going to go from west to east, and you already know what that means, California. We start right here in Los Angeles where we can find Interstate 210. Interstate 210 is known as the Foothill Freeway in the Los Angeles area. It's an east-west route that follows the foothills of the San Gabriel Mountains. On the western end, it connects to Interstate 5, but as it moves to the east, the current sign portion of the route ends at California 57 in Glendora. The highway does continue, but at this point, it is signed as California 210 to reach back to parent I-10 in San Bernardino. Since this part is not up to interstate standards, it is not yet able to be signed as I-210, and until California finishes upgrading it, I-210 is left as an orphan interstate. Now next we will go up to the Bay Area where we have a few interesting cases. First is Interstate 280. The south end of I-280 is at I-680 in San Jose, and it runs northbound up to San Francisco where it is known as the Junipero Serra Freeway, nicknamed the world's most beautiful freeway for the scenery along the route. I-280 ends at King Street in San Francisco, just short of reaching the parent route I-80. However, I-80 is accessible via US-101 nearby. Also in the Bay Area, we have Interstate 380. Interstate 380 is a short route that provides access to the San Francisco airport. It does not connect directly with the parent route I-80, but it does branch off from Interstate 280, which then connects back to Interstate 680 to get to I-80. And next is one of the most interesting cases on the entire system. Interstate 238. This one is unique because for one, there is no Interstate 38, making it a complete orphan, the only one of its kind, but also because it is actually considered an auxiliary route of Interstate 80, which it still has no direct connection to. I-238 is a short interstate highway in Alameda County, California. The interstate portion runs east-west, but is signed as north-south due to being considered part of the longer California 238 route. I-238 was a special request by California due to Interstate 80 not having any more available auxiliary route numbers in the state. Currently, I-480 is available, as this was a former designation in San Francisco, which was decommissioned in 1991. There is no I-180 in California either, but there is a California 180 in Fresno, and apparently California doesn't give state routes and interstates the same number if they are separate roadways. Interstate 238 is indirectly connected to the parent I-80, via I-580 and I-880. Next, we will swing over to Texas where we can find Interstate 369. Interstate 369 forms a western loop around the city of Texarkana and long-term plans call for it to be extended south for a long distance down to the city of Tenaha where it is to eventually meet parent route I-69. I-369 is a complete orphan as the parent route I-69 is nowhere nearby and does not even exist itself yet in this part of the state. Texas is still in the development and planning stages with I-369 between Texarkana and Tenaha, and there is also the possibility of I-369 extending north to meet I-49 north of the city. So eventually this route is expected to be united with parent route I-69, but for now it remains an orphan interstate. Now I'm gonna swing all the way to the east coast where we have North Carolina. In North Carolina lies the orphan interstate 587. Interstate 587 is one that many might not be aware of because it is a very new designation. The parent route, I-87, was recently approved as a future corridor to run from Raleigh, North Carolina to Norfolk, Virginia. 
It will use existing sections of US-64 and US-17 to make this corridor once they are upgraded. As I discussed in an earlier video, North Carolina is very gung-ho about adding new interstates, so they went ahead and got the old US-264 signed as I-587 to Greenville. This section of US-264 was already at interstate standards, so it was just a matter of updating the signage for the most part here. Currently, it ends at I-95 near Wilson on a concurrency with I-795, but will eventually continue along the existing US-64 to where the existing US-64 will then be I-87. A little to the south in the other Carolina, we have Interstate 585. Unless you have reason to venture into Spartanburg, then you've probably never heard of this highway since it doesn't reach I-85. Interstate 585 is a spur route that goes into downtown Spartanburg. An interesting thing about 585 is that it actually was once connected to the parent route I-85. But in 1995, I-85 was moved north to bypass Spartanburg, while the old I-85 became Business 85, making I-585 an orphan interstate. The roadway does continue past Business 85 to junction with I-85 itself, but there is a signalized intersection with Upper Valley Falls Road right before that interchange, and I doubt South Carolina plans on removing it anytime soon. So don't expect this orphan to get adopted in the near future. Still in the South, we have a couple examples in Florida. These are both in the St. Petersburg area. They are I-175 and I-375. These short freeways were planned to be part of longer freeways in Pinellas County to include the Pinellas Belt Expressway, which would have followed some part of the current US-19 alternate route up to Clearwater. Despite having the funding, these routes were canceled in the 1970s due to local opposition and these two short routes remain. They don't reach I-75 directly, but have indirect access via I-275, which itself used to be the main I-75 route. Now let's head up to Maryland, and here it is, Baltimore. An interesting thing about Baltimore's interstate network is that all the auxiliary routes are from I-95, while I-70 and I-83 do not have any. Though I-70 did have some plan, they were all canceled in the city. The orphan route here in Baltimore is I-795. I-795 branches off from I-695 northwest of the city and spurs toward the suburb of Reisterstown. So this one is a case of the orphan not having a direct connection to the parent, but still indirectly connected through another auxiliary route. Now the moment that you've all been waiting for, the big daddy of orphan interstates in the city that we should expect no less from is none other than I-78 in New York City. I-78 is or at least was planned to be the main east-west interstate highway in New York City. It does make it through the New Jersey portion of the metro and is home to a famous violation of interstate standards with traffic lights in Jersey City. It then enters the Holland Tunnel and arrives in the Tribeca neighborhood of Manhattan. Here you are greeted by a strange configuration of final exits where you can choose your fate. Options include Brooklyn, Downtown, Uptown, Canal Street, and West Street. Either one you choose, this marks the end of I-78 in New York. I-78 in New York was one of Robert Moses' most ambitious plans and would have called for the displacement of thousands of families and demolishing many businesses across Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens. The route was to connect to the Williamsburg Bridge, cross Brooklyn to reach the JFK Airport, and use the Throgs Neck Bridge to end at a connection with I-95 in the Bronx. The cancellation of I-78 in the city led to all of its auxiliary routes being orphaned and having no connection to it. The first and most well-known is I-278. I-278 runs from Linden, New Jersey, crossing into Staten Island, Brooklyn, Queens, the RFK Bridge, and then meets I-95 in the Bronx. In fact, based on the final routing, it probably would have made more sense for I-278 to be an auxiliary route of I-95 rather than I-78 these days. It is the only expressway that enters all of five New York City boroughs and serves as a vital link for travel between Long Island, Staten Island, and New Jersey. The other auxiliary route is I-678, which is known as the Van Wick and Whitestone Expressways locally, running from JFK to I-95 in the Bronx. The Nassau Expressway near JFK was previously intended to be a part of I-78, later signed as I-878, and then finally downgraded to New York Route 878 in 1991. You can always count on New York to be the scene of all things unusual when it comes to interstate highways. Further north in upstate New York, you have Interstate 590 in Rochester. I-590 is a short freeway serving the suburb of Brighton, southeast of the city. It forms part of a beltway around the city with I-590, New York 590, I-390, and New York 390. I-390 provides an indirect connection to the parent route, I-90, to the south of the city. And one final orphaned interstate can be found near Buffalo. 
The highway here is Interstate 990. Interstate 990 is located northeast of the city, entirely within the town of Amherst, New York. Interstate 990 begins at I-290 and then travels northeast until its northern terminus at New York 263. I-990 was originally intended to be a longer freeway, connecting to the proposed Niagara Falls to Rochester Interstate, but this interstate was canceled. A stub ramp can still be seen at the northern terminus where the highway was to be originally extended. Fun fact about I-990 is that it is the highest numbered interstate on the system. Access to the parent route I-90 is provided via sibling route I-290 to the south. Our final interstate orphan is in Worcester, Massachusetts, and it is Interstate 190. Interstate 190 runs northbound from Worcester to Massachusetts Route 2 in Leominster. I-190 is an example of an orphan that connects indirectly with the parent. Its southern terminus is at sibling route I-290, which then heads south to meet I-90 in Auburn, Massachusetts. An interesting fact about this route is that a portion of the highway was built with extra wide shoulders, which are painted green to prevent runoff from contaminating the nearby Wachusett Reservoir. And there you have it guys, a rundown of America's interstate highway orphans. Have you guys driven on any of these orphan routes? Are there any other orphans that you're aware of in the states? Let me know what you think. See you on the next one, coming soon to a town near you.